Good morning, everyone. Check out these events and classes. Shredding Hunger is October 19th. This is our annual food drive. KW Southwest will shred your papers for free when you donate non-perishable food to help feed hungry families in Fort Bend County. Use your flyer and promote this event to your database and in your community. Trunk or treat at KW Southwest means we bring Halloween to our parking lot. Bring your family and friends to go trunk to trunk getting candy in a safe and fun environment. Last year we had over 1,500 people attend. Use your flyer and promote this event to your database and in your community. On Monday, we held the AI-powered real estate marketing hands-on with ChatGPT class. It was a great session and we plan to offer it again. Happy Monday, just finishing up this amazing class today. Everybody knows ChatGPT and what it can do for your business, whatever you're doing. So take a look at it. This is Tanya Talking Real Estate. Look out for monthly content to share on your social media and email newsletters. A special shout out to all of our agents posting their new signs, banners, and other marketing materials they ordered from Agent Marketing Desk. For more information on marketing services at KW Southwest, visit agentmarketingdesk.com. All right, happy Wednesday, everyone. Good morning, Thank you so much everyone. For joining us. Check I know a bunch of people are rolling in, but I want to be respectful of your time. Our appointment was at 11 o'clock, and it's 11.06. We have packed agenda, so I want to make sure we stay on schedule. So let's do a little restart. Happy Wednesday, everyone. All right, can we do this just one more time because the energy really sucks. Let's do it again. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy, Happy Wednesday. Wednesday, Yana. Oh, that is true. Yes. Thank you so much. My favorite slide of the week. Any new marriage, babies, new listing. Well, anybody want a lottery? I'm not saying it. Um, investment properties. Or is there simply someone uh, that you are grateful for or somebody that you would like to fill their bucket? Anyone? So much gratitude this week. I know. I love it. All right, Ms. Sherry. Okay. I am grateful for an old neighbor of mine that lives in my neighborhood and he is constantly thinking of me and I can, I mean, and constantly giving me leads. All and right. so it's the best of all worlds. And it just started from a high. I wasn't even doing real estate at the time, but he just appreciated that I took the time to get to know him. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Who else? Building relationships. Love it. I know that is good. Mona, share with us some of the wins of the week. Okay. Okay. I had a luxury listing and I got it under contract in four days. So. Uh... <laughs> All right. Anybody online? We have many of you there. Just unmute yourself and share with us. Going once, going twice. All right, moving on. Before we move into our fabulous lunch sponsor, I would also like to invite you. If you are new to our organization or maybe you are visiting and you feel comfortable introducing yourself to the rest of the team, would you mind to stand up? All right, we have a few of you. You want to give them a mic so they can introduce themselves? I'm not sure if I fit into new. You know, what? Yes. You know I, I was here, um, I think about five years ago. And I went to Realms and I'm back. And now you're back. Welcome back. <laughs> yes. Hey. I'm so glad you saw <laughs> Um, hi, you guys. My name is Victoria. Um, I'm newly licensed and I'm just here to visit um, just to get an idea of what the culture is. And I like what I see so far. So, yeah, yeah. welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We like what we see too. I'll bring this. Why did I get right? Don't ever give the mic to the Yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, let's invite our fabulous lunch sponsor, Ms. Sheena. Please take it away. Let's give her a round of applause. Look at her walking here. 
Good morning. Thank you so much for having me today. I wanted to come today to support your office, support your business, and be of value to you. Um, I want to be your go-to person for all things home warranty. I love to speak to your clients regarding the home warranty process, set up that expectation with them, talk to them about the different plans that we have, and really meet them where they are in that transaction. Um, we have, I've, I've passed up, did everyone get a price sheet? Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. We have three great plans. I'd love to talk to them about that. Um, we have the Shield Essential, Shield Plus, and the Shield Complete. And just like home insurance, the more you pay, the more comprehensive coverage you're going to get. So our top plan is one of the best. It's going to provide coverage on your major components in the home, as well as all your appliances, roof leak repair coverage, and unlimited AC refrigerant, which is a very big value for your clients. I've been with American Home Shield over 10 years, and what that means for you is I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm here to help your clients after the sale as well. So um, I love to talk to them when they're going through the process, but even afterwards, if they have a question about the warranty, I'm happy to help them through that process. So please keep me in mind. I'd love to be on your next, next transaction, and I look forward to working with you. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Awesome. We are going to shake things up a little bit. Uh, we are going to invite our preferred business partners towards the end. So thank you for your patience. So Verna, where are you? Come on, hurry up. 30 seconds. Three, two, one, go. So every Friday, you know, <laughs> at 1 p.m., we are doing a mastermind questions and answers on the new docs, uh, September 25th, which is today at 1.30. We are having a one-hour C class about gifting that gets referrals. We've been leaning in on those conversations on building relationships. We talked about how some of those can um, leverage a lot of deals, and this is one of them. Um, we have also tonight, we have the KWYP game night. Remember, it's not about the number. Age is not about the the number, the vibe. Okay, excuse me. I kind of created the thing. I still stumble. Anyways, it's happening at KW Houston Central. You do not have to be 40 and under to participate. Come competitive people, please show up uh, for game night. Fire Up is coming up October 17th. You will be hearing a little bit more about that, but that's when we're bringing a dynamic duo here to our office uh, for five, six weeks. Six weeks? Five weeks. For five weeks, um, two MAPS coaches out there. We have Sarah Detmore, and we also have and Michael Flores. I couldn't remember. All right, so that starts off October 17th. October 19th, Shredding Hunger. It is our white label event. This means this is where you can take an event that we are pretty much sponsoring, and you can run it as it, as it is your own. We're Shredding Hunger and partnering with the East Fort Bend Human Needs Ministry. We're where your clients, your guests, your whomever can bring in their sensitive documents and as well as donate some items. So that's happening on October 19th. Trunk or Treat is happening October 26th. It'll happen right here in our parking lot. We have over 1,500 people typically comes through um, that event. So another white label event. And then if you appreciated value or you wanted to appreciate value the class, but you couldn't make it here on that, I think it was a Thursday, uh, we have another one, the Encore event happening on Saturday, November 9th. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. For those of you that just got here and feel very awkward sitting up front, this is your opportunity. 10 minutes of everybody looking at you so you guys can sit up front so you don't have to stand up in the back. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, Sarah, come on, come on up, come on up. Tell us a little bit more about uh, Fire Up. Do we have the video right after this? It's Norman and it's TV. All right, so let's start with the video first Hi, and then first. you save the day. Great. Normie, can you play it? What I love to do. No pressure. Go. Hi, I'm Michael Flores, and I'm super excited to talk to you about the class we got coming up on October 17th. Now, this class is like none other because Sarah Detmore and I have specifically written it for you. That's right. Nobody else has gotten this class, and you're the first to get it before we take it outside these four walls, okay? So come to the class. Now, here's the question I have for you. Would you hire you? 
Would you hire you to be a real estate agent for you? In other words, would you hire you if you were building a team? See, before you started real estate, I guarantee you had a regular job and you had to be at that job at a certain time and you couldn't leave before a certain time and you had to do a certain job during that time you were there. And the question is, are you treating real estate like that? Or are you showing up when you feel like it? Are you making excuses of why you need to leave early and you're not getting the job done? So I bet, would any other team leader in this office hire you? I don't know. What I do know is that you're probably not making the money that you set out to make and why you joined real estate. So why don't you sign up for this class and come learn the skills that it takes to do exactly what it takes to be successful. Now this class is gonna give you the skill and it's gonna help you understand why real estate is important to you. Now here's the other thing, it's also gonna challenge you to find out if real estate is really the class that, or really the business that you wanna be in. In this class, you're gonna find out, am I really a real estate agent or am I a fake? So we're gonna find that out and maybe you just need to go find a different career. We'll find that out too. <laughs> so come on, join us October 17th, get you some. So get what, you some. get you some. <laughs> Obviously, Whoa. obviously, Michael Flores and I are passionate about all of you beautiful people making the amount of money that you want to make. And if I were to, to ask the room, and if you don't want to answer, that's fine too. But by show of hands, who is not making the money that they intended to make this year? Or maybe the money they need to make this year? I appreciate the two hands in the air. And, and if you didn't raise your hand, maybe you don't want to share and that's okay too. Yet, um, can we agree guys that no matter the market, real estate's hard, right? We talk often in our trainings and in our courses, we talk about uh, playing the ultimate long game in real estate. Well, Michael and I are grouping together to, again, like he said in his very enthusiastic video, um, he's fired up, which I love. <clears throat> um, we were kind of putting our minds together and we've created some content that while we're talking about the ultimate long game in real estate, our goal is for, for us to share content with you that will produce quick results because if all of you had one more closing by the end of this year, would that be a win for you? Everyone should say yes. Okay, great. And thank you so much. Um, so that's the goal, right? And so uh, it's a five-week series. There, There is an investment that you'll be making into this five-week series. And um, I think we have a QR code we can put up on here later. Don't know where that is, but Namesh created it. Thank you so much, Namesh. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, guys, we, 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 we wanted to use Reliant stadium for this event. And quite frankly, we couldn't because we know how popular it's going to be. So we're going to have it here in the training room. And so with that being said, it's going to max out at 120 people and this event will sell out. Well, what's important to disclose is I so wish it was 120 from our office, mm. but this also oh, includes yes. our Connor. We have office, to, we have to share. Signature and we have to share. Okay. <laughs> so the sign up link is up and we'll figure out how to get that up on the screen later. If it's not already there. I trust Norman has it. Um, don't wait to participate in this event. If you, if you want to be held accountable at a high level to producing more business this year. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. I'm sorry. What have we met? Okay. This is not bold. Yes. Goodbye. This is not going to be mold, bold, mold, bold, bold. Look, I'm ESL. I can get away with it. If you it. have questions and if you're like, what the heck did you just talk about? Who's Michael? Come talk to me. Thank you so much. Fantastic. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. Raise your hand if you felt the intensity in the video. All right. Good. I'm glad I wasn't alone. All right. Moving on. Hi, no, no more Michael. Yeah, no. <laughs> Michael wasn't enough. That was enough. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, what I would like to do right now, and that's probably why every single one of you is here, is to actually learn from our vice president of Johnson Development that I would like to invite in for a minute to talk to us about uh, what they have going on, uh, updates, and really a forecast for 2025 and 2026 as well. So please join me and give a round of applause to Mr. Troy. Come on. And I think I butchered your first name. It's Trey, correct? Yes. That's yeah. Correct. Thank you. All right. Take it away. Thank you. All right. I feel like it's been over a year and a half since the last time. How many of you heard me speak about Johnson before? All right. Not that many. A lot of new faces. That's fantastic. Well, uh, like uh, Yana said, my name is Trey Reichert. I've been with Johnson Development now for 19 years. And in that time, I've been primarily focusing on uh, developing master plan communities like Riverstone and Veranda and our Jubilee community. 
And so now I am so excited because I head up our Houston operations for our company. So I get to talk about a lot more than just the projects that I'm working on. Uh, today with me, uh, I've got uh, Carrie and Ann Claire. They are part of our marketing team for one of our really exciting projects that I'm gonna talk about last today. But I know that many of you are primarily focused in Fort Bend County, but I know, just show of hands, how many of you have listings outside of Fort Bend County? All right. So I wanted to do something a little bit different today and actually give you a sneak peek into some of our newest master plan communities, not just in Fort Bend, but in the Houston region. And I think that'll provide a lot of value for you because it'll give you a lot more opportunities. Uh, if you've sold or listed a home in a Johnson development community, show of hands. All right, we need to get 100% participation from all of you guys. And, and hopefully after today, uh, we will get there. But as this first slide shows, you can see we have been in business a long time. Next year will be our 50th year. So we're very, very proud of that. Just uh, a few stats from last year. Again, had a record year for new home sales, over uh, about 4,000 new home sales in all of our communities. We had three listed in the top 50 for the nation. And all three of those happen to be in Fort Bend County. Uh, we've got Jordan Ranch, Cross Creek Ranch, and Siena. And the mid-year report came out uh, and shows these same three communities in the mid-year top 50. And uh, again, we're very, very proud of that image on the far right there because we do have more top selling communities than any other developer in the nation over the past 10 years. This uh, graphic shows you where we are located. We've got a lot of real estate in Houston. We've got 22 active master plan communities uh, scattered not only in the Houston region, but we've got some in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Austin, and even one in Atlanta, Georgia. But again, we're here in Houston. We want to focus in on that. So a lot of red dots um, in the Houston region. And you can see on that Southwest corridor, in Fort Bend, and so we'll talk about that. But since we are in Fort Bend, I wanted to give you some numbers that you've probably never heard before. And just looking at the 10 master plans we have in Fort Bend County, that represents over 26,000 acres of land in just Fort Bend County alone. As a company, we are a little over 50,000. So more than half of our business is in Fort Bend. We love this county. And at full build out, of those 10 master plan communities, that'll represent over 48,000 residential lots. We're a little uh, over 40,000 at this point in time. So if you look at the population and number of homes in Fort Bend, um, we Fort Bend actually has just under 260,000 households in the county. We, we hold about 15% of that in the entire county of Fort Bend uh, that's pretty staggering. So again, uh, this is our favorite county to develop in. Uh, obviously, a lot of value is being created in our communities. And just wanted to throw what our average sales price is so far in our Fort Bend communities at just under $600,000. Uh, price per square foot, I know that's a, a big number uh, for a lot of you that you focus on. Uh, our average is probably in the one hundred and ninety to two hundred. dollars a square foot. Uh, some of our newer communities are kind of in the 180 range. Some of our older developed communities uh, like Riverstone and Harvest Green are closer to $220 uh, a square foot for new homes. So pretty strong range there. All right. Mm, next slide. Okay. Uh, getting back to the map again, I, I just wanted to uh, touch on that. If you, we can go ahead and go one more. There we go. Okay. Fort Bend County. So again, focusing on Fort Bend, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because I do want to talk about some of our newer communities, but everybody knows Siena. It's almost 11,000 acres. Uh, there are over 11,000 occupied homes to date but we still have probably another six, seven years to go of development. So a lot more real estate to go in the Siena area 
and it'll continue to be in that top selling uh, for our communities. Riverstone is almost done. Believe it or not, there's one section left. Um, there's a, a custom builder that purchased some land on one of our big lakes, and they are offering some home sites there on some specialty lots. And those homes can actually go up to three stories. So a really cool urban feel in Riverstone. And those homes are actually starting around 1.5 million and going up. Again, a huge premium being on that lake. It will be gated. So if you're interested in learning more about that, uh, you can go on our Riverstone website or the builder is actually called Psalms Fine Homes. Yeah, you can Google them and they have information on their website. Uh, the other two communities, Veranda and Imperial, are pretty much done. Harvest Green is probably 12 months out from putting their last lots on the ground. So we're starting to kind of close out Harvest Green. Cross Creek Ranch is pretty much closed out. I think there's a few hundred sales opportunities in the entire community of Cross Creek. Uh, Jordan Ranch is about 18 months uh, from being developed out. Uh, so that is kind of wrapping up. And again, I'm, I'm going to focus in at the very end on a new Fort Bend community. But I wanted to touch on that because I know a lot of you have listings in Fort Bend. So let's uh, roll right into our first community that I want to highlight, which is Jubilee. How many of you have never heard of our Jubilee community? All right, that's great. You're going to get some value today. So Jubilee is off of 290. It's on the northwest side of, of town. It is just about four miles west of the Grand Parkway uh, off of 290. So this gives you a little bit more uh, zoomed in look on, on where it's located, just north of the, the Katy Prairie Conservancy. And it's 1,600 acres. Uh, it'll probably take us 12 to 14 years to build out on that project. Uh, a little over 4,000 home sites there and some commercial and uh, multifamily. The unique thing about this project, Hockley address, Harris County, City of Houston ETJ, and Waller School District. So if that's not confusing enough. Uh, however, Waller, if, if for those of you that have never toured their schools, it is quite impressive, state of the art. Uh, I think they've kind of shocked all of us on um, what they put into their schools. And the exciting thing about Waller ISD for Jubilee is, is they just closed on an elementary school site in our community. We just started sales this year. In February, March, we uh, had our first sales. Grand opening was in May. It's brand new, right at about 100 new home sales thus far. And uh, the school district went ahead and closed on the elementary earlier this year and actually hot off the press yesterday they closed on a new high school and junior high site within the boundaries of Jubilee. So looking at that map, the far right-hand side, you see that purple square. Uh, that's right off of Katie Hockley Road, and that will be a high school and junior high within Jubilee. Uh, and so that has been finalized. So that is fantastic news, and we're really proud of Jubilee. It is a, a very unique concept. It's based on wellness. Uh, in the homes and in the community itself. So I encourage you to research a little bit more about that. This was a rendering of our entry. So as you're driving down 290, you see this huge vertical structure, uh, about 50 feet in height. And this is what it looks like today. So again, it's just recently completed, uh, but I think the, uh, the architect hit, hit it perfectly with just the impact that it makes when you're driving down the freeway and you get to see that as you're driving in. Our second community, Creston. Anybody heard of Creston before? Not that many. So our founder, Larry Johnson, who, who passed away a couple of years ago, he was from a small town in North Texas called Crest, Texas. And this was our very first project that we launched right after his passing. And that team really wanted to honor his legacy and came up with this name that doesn't even exist. So it's a made up name, Preston, and uh, it's in the Magnolia area. The tagline, Live Legendary, to honor Larry Johnson. So just a really cool story there. 
And uh, where it's located, it's off of 249, again, north side of Houston, which is uh, also called the Aggie Expressway. It is literally 40 miles from Kyle Field. Uh, so for those of you that are, you know, huge Aggie fans, uh, it's kind of halfway between College Station and Houston. And um, that one is uh, just about to start selling homes. Um, we're closing lots, in fact, uh, this week for this community. And they'll be ready for our home tour in the spring. 1,400 acres, about 3,500 lots planned for this community. And so, like I mentioned, some of the builders have already listed their uh, products on their websites. You can uh, Google Creston and learn more about our builders. But it is split between Montgomery and Grimes County. The majority of it is in Montgomery. And it's also uh, zoned to Magnolia ISD for the majority of it. Over closer to 249, that's where you get into uh, Grimes County and Navasota ISD. And you, know, you probably can't read this, but if you can visualize, so it's very long. It's about two and a half miles long. Uh, on the west end, it touches the Aggie Expressway, which is 249. And on the right-hand side, that's 1486. For those of you that are familiar with Magnolia, we're starting right in the heart, in the middle of the community and developing out from there. And uh, it's a completely wooded site, uh, beautiful trees in this area, some natural uh, elevation change. So beautiful location and a few different product sides, uh, sizes for Creston. And uh, this kind of gives you an idea of what that entry will look like coming off of 1486 with the trees in the background. Our third one that I want to talk about is Grange. Hopefully more of you have heard of Grange. No? Show of hands. Okay, a few more. Okay, this one is, I have to say, the probably the, the biggest highlight that everybody talks about is that it's zoned to Katy. It's Katy ISD, Katy High School. Uh, builders are foaming at the mouth to be in this community. And uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. So where it's located, it's just north of I-10. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Cane Island uh, in that area. It literally touches Cane Island. There, Cane Island's west boundary is our east boundary. And uh, that road uh, between them, uh, Bartlett Road, that's pretty much our eastern boundary. And then we go all the way to the uh, Houston Executive Airport on our western end. And so it's 1,100 acres, a little bit smaller than the first two I mentioned, but there's a lot of opportunity to expand this community. We actually partnered with Jeff Hildebrand, who owns Hillcorp. So this is a joint venture uh, that we did with, with uh, his group and planned for about 2,400 home sites. Those builders have been selected. They're on Grange's website. Uh, those lots will be ready by the end of this year. So it'll probably be a late spring, summertime uh, grand opening for that community. Uh, and like I said, the highlight is Katy ISD for sure. It's in Waller County. Uh, so this is kind of our first community where we're, we're tapping into Waller County, not Harris County. And so that has its own unique challenges. Uh, but Really cool uh, plan for Grange. We're starting on the east end of Grange, closer to Cane Island, uh, coming off of Franz Road, which will be right at our southeast corner there with a cool town center concept in the middle. And each one of these communities, we typically launch in a first phase with anywhere from 300 to 400 lots. So typically four to five different product types uh, ranging anywhere from the 300s up to the six, 700,000 range. So if anything like that uh, interests you, then I would encourage you to look into those three. All right, so now um, uh, wrapping up on grains, kind of a muted entry there. Uh, it's meant to be sort of a small town feel going into this old uh, sort of rice field area. And uh, it's so very cool. All right, the last project that I want to talk about, and this will wrap up, is in Fort Bend County. Not sure how many of you heard or read the announcement in March of this year, but we closed on the uh, first tract that the George Foundation has ever sold of this size. 
uh, in their existence. Um, the George Foundation itself has obviously been around for over 80 years. If you're local to Fort Bend County or the Houston region, you've probably heard of the George Foundation. You've probably even been to the historical park with your kids or yourself. Um, so they are a staple in Fort Bend County. They've given, yeah, they've awarded over uh, $300 million in scholarships and grants and land donations uh, to continue their mission. And that's not going to stop. It's actually going to continue to grow. And that's why they decided to partner with Johnson. We were the only developer that they were talking to. Um, they are obviously watching what we've already established in Fort Bend. And uh, they've been great partners uh, thus far. And just to give you a sense of scale on this piece of property. So this is this is a map of the uh, southwest region of, uh, and I know I'm blocking the big screen here, but I'm sure people on, on online don't care to see my face. So this is a 15,000 acre tract of land that is contiguous land owned by the George Foundation. We didn't purchase 15,000 acres. So just want to put that out there, make that clear. But that's huge. That's only second in size to the woodlands as far as a large scale master plan community. And this is a little uh, more detailed layout of what that all encompasses. So for those of you that are familiar with the historical part, which was just recently rebranded as the George Ranch, uh, that is always going to remain. That will be in the central core of their 15,000 acres. We closed on the yellow, which is right at 1,500 acres. So if, again, for those of you that are familiar with Fort Bend, the Randall High School complex uh, is actually that, that little block out there on our triangle area. That's where the, the Randall High School and, and their junior high and middle school are located. That's right off of 1477 Mennonite Road. And we will have lots ready for builders by the end of next year. So end of 2025 and, and have our grand opening in the spring of 2026. But that's just phase one. So the George Foundation has selected Johnson Development to be the master planner for the entire 15,000 acres. That doesn't mean that Johnson's going to get to develop it all, but they want us, they want our expertise to drive the vision, the naming, the branding, the signage, the architectural control, the land uses. And this is a long-term uh, project. It's probably going to be uh, over 50 years to develop this out. So it's going to be around a very, very long time. Just to give you some uh, sense of scale, how many of you have driven down Siena Parkway from Highway 6 all the way through to 521? All right. The majority of you. That's seven and a half miles. I know y'all feel it. Probably takes you 30 minutes to just make that drive with, with all the stops. This is nine miles east to west, nine miles north to south at, at its tips. Nine miles. So this is a huge piece of property. If you combined Siena and Riverstone together, it would still be a little less than this. So again, this is a long-term project. The one difference that we are working with the George Foundation on is this is going to have an urban core that is similar to the woodlands. So we all know the woodlands from I-45 to Lake Woodlands and everything they've done uh, with that area, with all the urban development, we are working with them to, to make this a new region uh, sort of destination um, for this entire, uh, you know, Houston area. So this is pretty exciting news. Again, it's a long-term project that uh, we're excited to uh, be working on with them. But again, the 1,500 acres that we're starting with, that's going to take us about 12 to 14 years to develop out, but it's just going to conti continue to roll. Uh, they'll, they'll probably be carving off pieces of land uh, over the next several years and bringing on a lot more opportunities for all of you. 
So if you love Fort Bend County and you, and you want to continue to sell in Johnson communities, uh, this will be a great staple for you. And, and, and Carrie and, and Claire get to run the entire marketing for this project. So pretty darn exciting uh, for that. So that is it on our projects. If any of you want to ask me more questions, I put my email and LinkedIn up there. So you have that information. I know that uh, Carrie has uh, some information to share. I know all of you know and love Tammy McCall. Uh, she's actually the one that set this up. But unfortunately, she had a trip planned that she just couldn't get out of. So Carrie gets to, to play Tammy today. So the far cry from Tammy McCall, I know. All right. <laughs> we'll do our best. Thank you all for allowing us to be here today. Um, realtor sales are 85 percent plus in all of our communities um, across the Houston region. So we truly could not do it without you. So we thank you. Um, but Tammy gave me a list of things to go through just to keep you all updated as to what we have going on within our communities. Um, as she says, we like to empower our realtors. So there's quite a few different events that we have going on. Um, and Claire and I have some different flyers up here. So it's all within our Realtor University. But if you prefer a paper uh, flyer, then we have some of those up here as well. But just to click through really quickly, um, on October the 2nd in Cross Creek West, um, we are hosting a Stories Everyone Has One. It's not a CE credited um, event, but it's it's very cool. Tammy has started this. Um, it was her brainchild, if you will. Um, and she invites um, four or five different speakers to come and tell their story. Um, and it's an opportunity for those folks to to be vulnerable, vulnerable, um, tell their story. We all have a story, right? So it's just, it's telling those people telling their story. Um, one of the ladies that is going to be on the panel, her name is Terry Arnold. Um, and we are going to be spotlighting her mission, um, with a walk that we're doing in Cross Creek West. So I'll talk about that here in a minute too, but, um, stories, everyone has one on October the 2nd in Cross Creek West. Um, and then in Cross Creek Ranch, they are, we just opened up a new elementary school um, in Cross Creek Ranch, and we are helping to stock the bookshelves um, in their library. So they are collecting books um, at the Welcome Center within Cross Creek Ranch. So there's a list of different um, genres that they're looking for. So if you have some extra books laying around and would like to donate to that school, um, there's more information here on that. Uh, Legal 2 in Siena is being hosted on October the 8th. I don't think I need to give any more information about that, but if you need Legal 2 um, to round out your year, um, that is on October the 8th from 10 to 2.30 in Siena. Um, the event that I was talking about with Terry Arnold, um, so she has started a um, IBC network, um, and October is Breast Cancer Awareness uh, Month, as we all know. Um, IBC is inflammatory breast cancer. It was not something that I was ever aware of before I heard Miss Terry speak about it. Um, it's not detected on mammograms. So she is really trying to um, make everyone aware of this breast cancer that is out there. So on October the 19th, we are doing a 5k fun run, um, in Cross Creek West, um, and all monies, um, collected will go towards Terry Arnold's, um, IBC network. So it truly goes to research, um, on this type of breast cancer, um, where other different, um, different, um, uh, companies, they will do their research or their uh, monies that they collect truly just go to awareness. Um, this one actually goes to research and finding a cure for that inflammatory breast cancer. So urge you to go out to that um, and see our new community of Cross Creek West if you haven't. We're very Cross Creek Ranch and Cross Creek West heavy on this, but um, on November the 9th, um, we are hosting our annual gumbo cook-off in Cross Creek Ranch. This benefits the Fulcher Police Foundation. If you haven't had an opportunity to go out to this, it is a fun, fun event and some really good gumbo to try. So um, great, great beneficiaries with Fulcher Police Foundation. And the last thing I want to talk about is um, I left on your tables and there's a few more up here if you did not get one, but this is an updated brochure, showcase brochure that Tammy and Monica just have, have hot, hot off the press. Um, this has uh, QR codes throughout for all of our communities, links to um, inventory as well as the websites. But this first QR code, it goes to a, uh, a website that we like to call Realtor University. And within this, Realtor University is where you can find information about all these events that I just talked about, plus some. 
Um, there's public events listed, there's realtor events, realtor classes. So if you have not gotten onto Realtor University, I urge you to do so. Um, but this QR code right here in the front will take you to that. But all the communities that Trey spoke about, Grange, Creston, Jubilee, um, they're all listed within here. So you can go online and find out more information about them. The only one that we don't have yet is the George Foundation because we just don't have, we don't have a name yet and we don't have a website yet, but more info to come on that very soon. So and I think that was okay. all I have. Thank you very much. Now, before we let them go, we have time for about one or two questions. Any questions regarding existing communities or the George Foundation? Currently, Richmond delivers. Oh, Currently, uh, Richmond Post Office delivers to that area. It is technically Thompson's ETJ, but uh, they will, if people live in that area, they will have a Richmond address just because the post office delivers to that area. So, good question. Okay, we have two more. Sherry? Um, Great question. So the Fort Bend Parkway currently terminates at Siena Ranch in Siena. The uh, design of the bridge across the Brazos River is almost complete. So that bridge will actually be under construction, I would guess, somewhere within the next 12 months. And wow. so that will cross the river. Its current termination will be uh, 2759, which is considered the Booth Highway. But there are plans to continue to extend that all the way through the Austin Point community, which is just south of the George Foundation property that I mentioned. So you will probably have two Fort Bend Parkway segments under construction at the same time. Um, so that will provide another access point uh, for Fort Bend County residents that people have been waiting on for many, many years. All right. So last question, Lyle. Austin Point is a different developer, so yeah. Sorry. And just just to clarify, Johnson is the largest uh, developer. <laughs> <in> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Awesome. Okay. We all good. Was this helpful information? Sure. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Uh, now, do we have your permission to actually for our agents to look at the George Foundation that you shared? Yeah, there wasn't anything confidential. Okay, fantastic. Wonderful. So we are going to go ahead and share it with all of you guys so you guys can study it uh, in further detail. Wonderful. What I would like to do is to invite Rui so we get to celebrate our agents and then we will wrap it up with our business partners. So this is Rui's first time leading, second time leading on your own? Yes. Oh, then he's a pro. You've got pro. this. Wow. High energy, celebrate them. You got this. Go. Oh my gosh. Okay. How do I, I'm sure most of these people have taken Sarah's class before if she hasn't taught it yet. Where is she? I mean, we've got some really high producers in this, in this, um, in this presentation today, really high producers. Uh, first off, I want to just start off with the top listing units, individuals. We've got Lyle Mugi, Robbie Jansky, Sahar Khatib, Heather Lowry, Susan Grzynski, Sapna Patel. One clap. Yes. I was actually going to say hold off at the end because we've got a lot. Okay. We've got a lot. Uh, so top listing units, uh, teams for August, the Diaz team, Flores team, uh, Werner Real Estate, and Sharon Parker. We uh, gotta do a clap. Sorry. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> the top uh, top group in listing units: uh, Audra and Neil team, BMP team, Kathy Stubbs, uh, Kathy Stubbs team, the SIA group, and HTX Realty. So the next one is listing volume, not the actual listing units, but actual volume for the year, uh, for the month. Excuse me. Uh, Lal Mugi, uh, Robbie Jansky, Sapna Patel, Kitty Valance, and Heather Lowry. For teams, the Diaz team, Flores team, Irvin team, uh, Sharon Parker group, and Werner Real Estate. And of course, for groups, uh, Audra O'Neill team, BMP team, 
Kathy Stubb team, HTX Realty, and SIA Group. So now we're going to talk about closed units, top closed units for individuals. Um, first of all, for individuals, it's Serena Chu, Susan Grzynski, Jamie Castens, Amelda Pradhan, Nazneen Danani, Tanisha Foster, Sapna Patel. Please forgive me if I'm saying the name wrong. I tried to practice as much as I could beforehand, but really, forgive me. Give us a teaser though and share some of the numbers so that way we know at least the top earner how many closed units they had. Okay. Well, Serena Cho, for example, she did nine closings That's um, awesome. in August. Uh, Susan Grinsky, eight. Uh, Jamie uh, did seven. Jamie and Imelda did seven each. Nazneen uh, did six. Tanisha and Sapna both did six as well. One more so, clap. Really good. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. Uh, top closed units for teams, the Diaz team, SMS Realty Group, the Ya Real Estate Group, uh, the Flores team, and Marta Mohan team. And of course, groups, the BNP team, Akio Properties, SIA Group, Audra O'Neill team, HTX Realty, and Home Coach Realty Group. So for top adjusted gross volumes, these are the individuals that, that made the top uh, the top five. Uh, Sapna Patel, Susan Grzynski, Mona Parikh, Sahar Khatib, and Bincy Jaga. Uh, for teams, the Diaz team, the Flores team, Marta Mohan team, Sharon Parker Group, and SMS Realty Group. Groups, BMP team, Audra O'Neill team, Akil Properties, SIA Group, and Kathy Stubbs. And then Triple Crown, these are the individuals who have done three or more transactions. Uh, transactions meaning actual sales, not leases for the month of August. Uh, Sahar Khatib, Susan Grzynski, Elaine Hatton, Bincy Jacob, Robbie Jansky, Jamie Kastens, Lyle Mugi, Sapna Patel, Imelda Pradhan, Melissa Salis, and Brandy Zemus. Awesome. So this is a really cool slide. This shows all the individuals who've done at least a million dollars in production for the month of August. This group of people right here combined did over $39 million That's uh, awesome. just in August. <laughs> Akil Properties Group, Ash Banzal, the BMP team, Justin Duffield, Sahar Khatib, Susan Grzynski, Bincy Jacob, Jamie Castens, Rima Mahota, Lyle Mugi, the Audra O'Neill team, Mona Parikh, Sapna Patel, Melissa Sallies, SIA Group, Tibby Takey, and Kitty Valance. Awesome. They deserve one more clap, actually. That was a lot. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we started a new thing. We haven't done this in a while, but we wanted to recognize the person who had the, the highest number of profit share for the month of August. Uh, this month, uh, excuse me, in August, it was Glisha Gibbons. All right. Keller Versaries. We've got quite a few of quite a few individuals here. Uh, celebrating the first year, Frederick Cunningham, Ayaz Dawani, Emmy Edigiri, Nathaniel Opia. Athena Perkins, Charlotte Srinivasan, Kinjal Sutar, Leslie Zavanjanja, David Kim, and then uh, going into second year, Alina Escobedo, Ad uh, Adina Espinoza, LaSharon Hipwhite, uh, Tiffany Kravchek, Sheila or Shayla Master, Kristen Morrow, Arjun Singh Acker. Three years, Rachel Brannon, Tanisha Foster, Azam Hulai, Brandon Turner. Brandon. Four years. <laughs> uh, Rima Mahotra, Jose Montiel, Debbie Zapeta. Five years. Yuman Kota, Imelda Pradhan, Maya Sims. Um, six years. Imran Baidani, Francisca Depew, Rajesh Desai, Tasha Hippolyte, Azka Azkasha Lula, Benjamin Trong. And Pinky Pirani is celebrating her seventh year with the company. Kathleen Geek, a guy, uh, nine years. Bar, our own Barbara Herrera. Barbara. Uh, and Melanie Horn Mel are both celebrating uh, 10 years with the company. Ernest Diaz, 13 years. Claudia Chan, 20 years. Victoria Coates, 23 years. 
Richard Williams Jr., 24 years. And just FYI, those people that were in their 20 plus years, they joined before the child labor laws because they look a lot younger than they really are. So just FYI. <laughs> and then I want to recognize the cappers for the month of August. Uh, Heather Lowry. Mona Puri. Alina Escobedo. Yay, Alina. Tibby Tiger. Yay. Jimmy Villanueva. All right. And then this is really kind of a special one for me because this is one that I always remember. The first listing that I've ever had, the first sale that I've ever had. And I was just telling Mona earlier, uh, my very first listing that I had and my first um, sale uh, uh, closing, those are my two most highest referring clients. They refer me more business than anybody else. So mm. this is a big deal to me. So for the first listings, um, Gannett, Jeanette uh, Chenier, Karina Maglong, Magalong, Neelam Charan, yeah. Charania, Nora Montalvo, Pamela Hall, Peter, Peter Gay Makala, Renita Scroggins. And the next are the, the first closings with KW. All right. uh, Charlotte Srinivasan. Guang Ming Li. Jennifer Whitley. Natalie Galvan. Yay. Pamela Hall. Right. And that's it. All right. Give yourselves a round of applause. Everybody. That's a lot yeah. of business. Congratulations. Thank you, Rui. You did a great job. Let's give him a round of applause. All right, we are right on time. I would like to invite our business partners to come on up and share a little bit more about uh, what you have prepared for our agents, and then we will go ahead and enjoy a wonderful lunch. Come on up. Let's give him a clap. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Eduardo uh, with Reliant. Uh, I guess I'm the only one. So um, yeah, I, I usually what I don't share is, um, and I want to let you guys know that I also can take care of temporary services for all like the property managers. And, you know, if you're dealing with any clients who um, have renters and stuff like that and need temporary services, maybe a couple of days a week, stuff like that, I'm also able to take care of those. And it's a pretty quick and easy process. So if you need those type of services as well, on top of everything else that I do, feel free to reach out to me. But other than that, thank you guys so much. Hey, good morning, good afternoon. Patent titles will remind you about our child care awareness. We have a basket that downstairs that's in our first floor. If you want to donate a toy and we're trying to raise money for a good cause. Also, we do have the Coda Ethnic class that Ms. Um, Bernard did approve that it will be on the October the 30th. And that's from 1 to 4 p.m. I am working on the flyer this week. Thank you. How you doing, guys? My name is Matias with Home USA, and first and foremost, go Astros! I don't know who was able to watch the game or who's the Astros fan out there. <laughs> so, uh, not a bunch of crazy news in the mortgage world. Um, the good news is we have seen application uh, increase the most since like June of 2022. So those 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 news that went out last week about the 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 Fed dropping the rates. Although that's a little bit misleading, oftentimes uh, it did trigger a bunch of people to go ahead and start applying for homes. And it looks like uh, Johnson's going to be keeping us busy as well. So, you know, let's get ready for all of that. And as always, we're here to help with any uh, questions or concerns, if you need to run numbers by anybody. And uh, we're thankful for the support. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So as everyone knows, interest rates went up or went down last week. Mortgage rates. Mortgage rates kind of went in the opposite direction. So unfortunately, it's something that was built into the market. It was sort of anticipated that rates over the last few weeks would come down. So we are still optimistic that we're going to see rates come down as the Federal Reserve continue to meet over the next couple of months. One thing that we've constantly talked about was getting buyers ready and prepared to buy. And does it make sense for buyers to wait for rates to come down and save 200 bucks a month, $250 a month, or wait for home prices to continue to go up? 
Anybody want to comment? By now. Okay. So I have a little bit of proof. So there's some new news coming out, conforming loan limits, meaning a loan where we're getting a conforming conventional loan are going up to what number January 1st? Does anyone have that information? 800 $2,650 will be the new conforming loan limit. What does that mean to last year's or this year current conforming loan limit? Anyone know how much that was? 766,250, 650, I'm sorry, 766,250. So that's an increase since last year of 4.7%. What are conforming loan limits based off of? Average home prices nationwide. So nationwide, if a $400,000 house went up 4.7%, how much does that equate to? Almost 5% times $400,000 is almost 20 grand. It's 18,000 and change. The reason to point that out, people that are waiting on the fence for rates to improve just paid 4.7% more for their house. That's a conversation at least for you all to have across the country, regardless of what's going on, average wise, we're seeing prices continue to increase. Here's a little, quite a little tidbit. In 2020, does anyone know how much the conforming loan limit was? 2020, $510,400, 400 We've seen an increase of almost $300,000 average home price in five years, starting January. Home prices are not coming down. Part of the reason we're having the affordability issue is prices have gone up to go up as much as they did, 57% on average since 2020. Get people's in, people in houses, let them feel the appreciation of that, the value of the house. It's just a good conversation to have. The longer we wait, the more we know we're going to pay for a home. Awesome. Thank you all. Thanks we're here to help. Dale. Yeah, thank you. Hey, I just want to piggyback off of what Dale just said real quick, right? We've had a lot of conversation recently regarding value, fiduciary, right? And showing competence to your clients. If you are not having that conversation with your buyers right now, what Dale just said, you are absolutely doing your buyers a disservice, mm -hmm. okay? Have that conversation, please. Awesome. Thank you, Namash. All right. Well, thank you so much. We hope that you found today's meeting valuable. We are going to go ahead and share the slides from Jensen Development so you can use it for marketing purposes. And let's enjoy some lunch. Thank you, guys.